All right. At this point, we have a Raspberry Pi that has Docker on it, and it has Sama set up and Sama connected to Windows machine, a Linux machine, and a Mac machine. So just to prove that there's Docker on here, there's Docker, and then to prove that there's Sama set up and it's being shared with another machine, there's Sama share folder with our Windows file, and they're being shared to all of us. <clears throat> So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to download a Docker program called File Browser that will allow me to share uh, an item inside the SAML share through a web browser to another user. What I always do first when it comes to Docker is that I like to make a projects folder. And right now, I don't believe I have one. Yeah. So I'm going to make directory. I'm going to call it projects. And I got to do sudo. And so now we're going to change directory into projects. And right now, inside projects is empty. So I'm going to make another directory. And this one's specifically for file browser. And so now I'm going to change directory into file browser. And as we're getting this set up, we're going to need to create some files for file browser to run off of first of all. So we're going to do a quick sudo touch file browser.db for database and then docker-compose.yaml. We're going to do a quick sudo nano of the docker compose yaml. And I'm going to put this compose yaml notes on my website, which will be linked down below in the bottom of the video, but it's pretty simple what we're going to do here. So we're going to name the service, we're going to name it File Browser, and the image that we're pulling is we're pulling File Browser, and we're going to assign it to this user, and then we're going to give it, make it open to the ports 8383, and then this is where we direct it to the volume that we're sharing. Uh, right here, we're directing it to the Samba Share folder itself. It can be more specific. You can go on down there and just give permission to it to a certain folder inside of there. But for this example, we're just doing the Samba, shoulder, Samba share folder itself. Uh, here's going to be a database where it's going to store all of our information at. So whenever it restarts, I'm going to set the unless stop policy for restart. So if the power, if it was to lose power when the Raspberry Pi came back online, this Docker file, this Docker container should start back up also. And so now we're going to do control X for save, and we're going to hit yes and hit enter. And so now I always do docker dash compose up slash D so it runs in the background, and then force recreate as a habit. I always add that on to my docker and compose up, so, and it would help if I spelled force recreate right. And as you can see, the Docker has now come up. It says the file browser is not locally, so it's reaching out to Docker website looking for the file browser image. It's going to pull it down in a minute. All right, now we're connected and we're pulling the Docker image. Pulling file browser latest. And it says it's done, and we can do Docker PS. Docker PS shows it as restarting. That usually means that there's something in the Docker Compose file that it doesn't want. So we'll do something else. I'm going to do sudo vi docker compose yaml. So I had to edit my docker compose file. And what I forgot to do was I got the file path to the file browser database wrong. And so I had to edit it. Uh, and this one we're going through projects and file browsers. And I forgot that for, for about four file browser to work in your browser, you have to have a settings.json. It can be completely empty. Uh, this Docker Compose file will edit it for you and create it for you. And so I had to create that and I had to give it a file path. And I also forgot I had something on that port that I tried to do originally, so I switched it to port 8585. And then I also, in this one, I set up the environment at the time zone so being Chicago for me. All right, quick Docker PS just to prove that it's actually running, and it shows that it is accessible through port 8585. So we are going to go to a browser. 
And we're going to open up a new tab. I'm going to do the IP of the Raspberry Pi. And we'll reference the port 8585. And we successfully have file browser here, and the default login is admin, admin. There's our sum of file right there, and we are in do a file browser. Once you log in, a very important thing to do first off the bat is to change your password. And so I'm just going to make up something, and then I'm going to click update. And then while I'm still in logged in, I'm going to change it from light to dark because, of course, everybody likes that. And so now if I refresh the page, we have the dark settings. Now let's say we wanted to share this with somebody. We would simply click on the file and then go to share. And we can set how long that the share is good for in seconds, minutes, hours, and days. We can give it a password. It says it's good for 12 hours. We're going to click share. And it's going to give us a code that we can copy. And then we can give to whoever we need access to it. So now... For this to work, the person has to be on our on our network, or they need to be able to connect via VPN. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to set up a cloud flared tunnel. That way, somebody external from our network can come to it, and then we can set up an extra level of security on there as a captive portal so that only certain people from certain networks can access it. So be sure to hit the like button and subscribe down below so you'll know when that video comes out and leave a comment on what you thought of the video. Thank you guys.